This video is sponsored by XS Tech, the galaxy's leader in innovative high technology. Now available on Earth, the same XS technology serving worlds across the galaxy. If something can't be done with XS, then it shouldn't be done at all. Join us and together we will seize the future with XS. Welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks. Old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we come face to face with your worst nightmare as we explore extraterrestrial alien encounter. A theater in the round attraction that opened at Disney's Magic Kingdom on June 20th, 1995. This attraction was suggested by all these volunteers who want to seize the future. So thank you to everyone for the comments. As always, if there's any attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Considered by many to be one of the most controversial Disney attractions ever created, Alien Encounter was an experience unlike anything else tried before at a Disney park. Taking place in complete darkness, the attraction relied heavily on binaural audio and physical effects to create a dark and terrifying atmosphere, one that instilled fear and feelings of helplessness among guests who were brave enough to ride it. Known for being too intense for young children and even some adults, Alien Encounter was and still is the scariest attraction ever built by Disney. What about... No, I've already done that. Oh, wait, maybe. No, that's been overdone way too much. Man, I've got nothing to start this video off with. Michael Eisner! Wait, was that thunder and lightning? Michael Eisner! Really? You know, I don't hate this. Watch out, everybody! It's the guy trying to ruin your childhood from the 90s! It's Michael Eisner! Oh, no! Alright, enough. I'm supposed to take this serious, right? But let's be honest. You can't talk about extraterrestrial alien encounter without talking about its biggest fan and the reason why the attraction survived as long as it did. Michael Eisner. After becoming the CEO of the struggling Walt Disney Company in 1984, under Eisner's leadership, the House of Mouse would be revitalized in the second half of the 1980s and early 1990s. Besides reshaping the struggling Walt Disney Productions into what is considered the Disney Renaissance, Eisner also oversaw the acquisition of Miramax Films, ABC, and ESPN to diversify the company's offerings, turning it into the international conglomerate it is today. Besides a focus on movies and television, Eisner would dedicate most of his time on the Disney theme parks, as through the 1970s and early 1980s the company was relying on them to stay financially stable, generating 70% of Disney's total income. With only smaller attractions being added during the 70s and early 80s, Eisner's plan was to open thrilling, engaging, modern rides that would draw thrill-seekers and teenagers to the parks. Over the next few years, Disney would add numerous attractions that would quickly become popular favorites, including Star Tours, Splash Mountain, the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Besides adding these new attractions, Eisner was also focused on updating the aging areas of the parks, 
specifically Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom. As a land dedicated to the future, it was always in the need of being updated, and by the early 1990s, instead of portraying what the future could possibly be, it looked like the future that was envisioned in the 1960s. In order to fix this problem, Imagineers began working on an ambitious renovation project in 1993 that would have the area less focused on time and more on different types of technology. Original known as Tomorrowland 2055. The new land would be transformed into an intergalactic alien spaceport, with the headline attraction being inspired by the 1979 sci-fi horror film Alien. The idea for an alien-inspired attraction actually dates back all the way to 1987. After the success of Star Tours, Eisner wanted attractions that featured stories and characters from popular movies that guests were fans of. Known as one of the best sci-fi movies of all time, Alien was met with critical acclaim and box office success, praised for its storytelling and special effects. Wanting to capitalize on the film's popularity, Disney would acquire the theme park rights from 20th Century Fox to create an attraction based on the franchise, with development beginning in the late 1980s. Known as Nostromo, named after the star freighter from the Alien film, the attraction would have enlisted guests on a rescue mission into the Alien alien-infested spaceship. Boarding their own APCs, guests would take aim at the xenomorph hordes with heavy artillery mounted to their ride vehicles, similar to either Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters or Men in Black Alien Attack. The attraction would never make it past the planning stages, as Eisner would drop the ride concept after being approached by a group of older Imagineers who convinced him that the franchise was too scary for its own attraction at a Disney park. While the film wouldn't be getting its own attraction, Alien would find its way into another when the Great Movie Ride opened at MGM Studios in 1989. The ride, which recreated iconic scenes from film history, would include Ripley's showdown with a xenomorph at the end of the film. With so many guests praising the Alien portion of the Great Movie Ride, a group of ambitious young Imagineers began working on a new concept to once again create a standalone attraction for the film. As part of Tomorrowland's major overhaul, the area's older, outdated attractions would be replaced, including the attraction Mission to Mars, which had opened at the Magic Kingdom in 1975. Instead of building a massive and expensive new attraction, the young Imagineers pitched the idea of a new show with modern effects that could be built in its place, one inspired by Alien. Presented by the Wayland yutani Corporation, guests would enter a demonstration of their new teleportation technology. However, a xenomorph is mistakenly beamed into the auditorium, terrorizing the guests. Cost-efficient and based on the popular franchise, Eisner gave the go-ahead for the attraction. Once again, the group of older Imagineers tried to sway Eisner into dropping the project, stressing that not only would the attraction be scarier than the proposed Nostromo, but that an R-rated movie had no place being at a Disney park. The Imagineers' concerns would fall on deaf ears, as Eisner refused to drop the project, stating that the Alien franchise would draw guests to the park and help make the new Tomorrowland a success. In a last-ditch effort to get the project dropped, the older Imagineers approached George Lucas for help, who had helped create Star Tours and was currently working as a creative consultant for the Indiana Jones adventure. Lucas agreed with the Imagineers that the alien-inspired attraction didn't fit in with the Disney parks and spoke to Eisner to voice his concerns. After speaking to Lucas, Eisner would make the decision to drop any reference to Alien altogether from the attraction and have Lucas work with the Imagineers to create an original story that can still tie in with the ride. While the ride's story would go through various changes and rewrites, its original premise stayed the same. Guests would enter a demonstration of an evil corporation's new teleportation
teleportation technology, where a bloodthirsty alien is mistakenly beamed into the auditorium, terrorizing the guests. Construction on the attraction would begin shortly after the closure of Mission to Mars in October 1993. Unlike other Disney attractions, Alien Encounter would take place in total darkness with a focus on the guests' non-visual senses. Most of the physical effects came from individual units that were mounted on the shoulder restraints behind the guests' heads when seated in the auditorium. By neural cues, which came from highly separated speakers arranged next to each ear, created effects like positional audio from the monster and other general atmospherics to keep the audience tense, including the murmuring and screams of other guests. The circular design of the theater allowed the positional audio effects to be quite effective, as it prevented individual guests from perceiving that their experience was not unique. Warm, moistened air was used to simulate the alien breathing down on the guests, and water sprinklers and air blasters mounted in the front of the the row were used to simulate the dripping of either the alien's drool or blood. Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter would soft open on December 16, 1994. This version of the attraction would have some major differences from when it officially opens in June 1995 specifically the pre-show. In this version, guests proceeded to a pre-show where they were introduced to a robot known as Technobotic or Authorical Mechanism Series 2000, or TOM 2000 for short, voiced by Phil Hartman. Known for his work on Saturday Night Live and as the voice actor for Troy McClure on The Simpsons, Tom gives guests a demonstration of the company's teleportation technology using an alien named Skippy, with the presentation's tone being funny and light-hearted. Reception to the attraction was overwhelmingly negative from guests, as many complained that it was too scary, as there was no indication of the change in tone due to the pre-show being the complete opposite. Another complaint was the complicated story, but that was only due to the guests screaming too long and loud, making important dialogue and plot points impossible to understand. Instead of toning down the attraction, Eisner would order for Alien Encounter the closed down in order to make it even more intense. The attraction would shut down just after six weeks on January 12, 1995, and would require another six months and $10 million in order to retool the pre-show to make it more sinister in tone, repaste the show to account for guest reactions, and reprogram every computer system as each show element had to be resequenced for the reaction. Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter would officially open at the Magic Kingdom on June 20th, 1995. While Disney has never revealed exactly how much the attraction cost to be built, reports suggested to be anywhere between 20 to 25 million dollars. Located within Tomorrowland at the Magic Kingdom, guests enter the Tomorrowland Interplanetary Convention Center for a demonstration of the newest teleportation technology from an alien corporation known as Excess Tech. An intro video explains how the company grew from a small manufacturing plant on an alien planet into the number one provider of various technologies all across the galaxy. While the company has been criticized for only having an interest in Earth in order to make a profit, chairman of the company L.C. Clench states this isn't the case, as excess tech's only motive is to help less advanced planets improve their quality of life even if profit is merely a byproduct of their actions. Guests proceed to a pre-show area where they are introduced to an excess robot known as Simulated Intelligence Robotics or Sir for short, voiced by Tim Curry. Sir plans to demonstrate to the guests Excess's newest innovation, the Series 1000 transmitter, by sending an alien named Skippy from one teleportation tube to another located in the room. However, things don't go according to plan, as Skippy shrieks in pain as the tube it's trapped in starts to crackle and fill with smoke. As the smoke clears from the other tube, Skippy reappears, but all fried and charred 
up, obviously in terms of pain. Sir reveals that this demonstration is nothing compared to what Excess has in store for the guests, as one of them will be transported to meet Chairman Clinch at the company's headquarters. Guests exit from the pre-show and head into the testing chamber, which can fit up to 162 willing volunteers. Once all guests are seated, the analyst modules, aka shoulder restraints, above their head lower into place. On screens all around the room, guests are introduced to two of Excess Tech's technicians, Spinlock and Dr. Femus, who will be helping with the demonstration. Before the two are able to select the volunteer for the demonstration, Chairman Clench arrives to announce a change of plans. Instead of teleporting just one guest to Excess, he will teleport himself to Earth where he can personally answer any questions the guests have. Clunch's impatience and technical difficulties cause the teleportation signal to be diverted through an unknown planet, but Spinlock and Femus are able to find a life form when searching for the chairman. While this is all going on, a metallic shield rises in the testing chamber to reveal a large tube starting to crackle and fill with smoke, just like the ones guests saw in the pre-show. Not wanting to lose their jobs, Spinlock and Femus send the life form they found, assuming it to be Clunch to the testing chamber. However, once the smoke clears, it's revealed not to be the chairman of Excess, but a 10-foot tall, winged, carnivorous alien. Before the two assistants are able to do anything, the alien breaks the glass of the transportation tube, trying to escape. Spinlock quickly activates a force field which prevents the alien from escaping, informing the guest that as long as the beams are on, the alien cannot fly out of the tube. Suddenly, the testing chamber loses his power as all the lights and beams go out, allowing the alien to escape. Now in complete darkness, guests are helplessly restrained in their seats as the alien stalks them from above in the rafters of the chamber. In an effort to restore power and get the alien back into the tube to transport it out, the two technicians get a maintenance worker, actually played by a live cast member, to enter the chamber from a catwalk above to fix the dire situation. Watching from the worker's night vision camera, guests see their knight in shining armor find the auxiliary power switch and reconnect the power cable. As soon as he is finished fixing the switch, the worker comes face to face with the alien, who mauls him to death, sending blood pouring down on the guests. Wanting seconds, the alien once again stalks the guests, eventually breathing down their necks, drooling on their arm, and licking their heads. Suddenly, the power comes back on, and Dr. Femus is able to draw the alien back into the tube by activating the tube's speakers and screaming into them. With the alien now in the broken teleportation device, the assistants overpower the tube to destroy the ugly looking E.T. once and for all. Right before the alien explodes, the metallic shield around the tube lowers to protect the guests, but not soon enough as they are sprayed with the alien's blood and guts. Guests are released from their restraints as the two technicians bid them goodbye, stating while there was a little glitch here and there with the demo, they were still able to experience the potential of excess technology. They apologize for any inconvenience they may have caused, but after all, it does take time to seize the future. Guests exit the test chamber and head into the Merchant of Venus gift shop, where merchandise from the attraction is sold. The 18-minute attraction was met with overwhelmingly negative reception from guests, as many criticized the overall tone for being too scary and intense, often leaving children and even some adults leaving the theater in tears. While there was a small group of theme park goers who praised Eisner for the creation of a unique attraction aimed towards older teens and adults, there was no doubt an encounter with a killer alien did not fit in with the park known as the most magical place on Earth. Just like the older Imagineers and George Lucas had foreseen, Alien Encounter wouldn't become the thrilling hit Eisner hoped it would be. While it did have a die-hard fanbase who appreciated the mature story and innovative ride system, Disney received numerous complaints that the attraction was too frightening for younger children, even though numerous signs were posted discouraging children under 12 from experiencing it. Word of mouth began to quickly spread about the show's disturbing tone 
tone, and as a result, the attraction's popularity plunged, with wait times ranging anywhere from 20 minutes to being able to walk right in. Only after eight years of operation, Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter would officially close on October 12, 2003, in order to make room for its replacement, Stitch's Great Escape. So why did the attraction close? While the obvious reason was low attendance levels due to its hair-raising, terrifying tone that deterred many guests from wanting to experience it, there were other factors that played a role in the attraction's demise. Wanting to capitalize on the popularity of Lilo and Stitch, which was a commercial success when it was released in theaters in June 2002, Disney not only saw a way to get the characters into the Magic Kingdom, but also could easily rework Alien Encounter's existing story and ride system to make the attraction much less scary and more family friendly. Another possible reason for the attraction's closure was Jeffrey Jones, who played Chairman Clench, being arrested for possession of child pornography in November 2002. While it most likely wasn't the direct reason why the attraction closed, Disney wanted to distance itself from Jones, and instead of reshooting the scenes he was involved in, it most likely helped the company in their decision to close Alien Encounter. Even though it shut down in 2003, Disney still pays tribute to the attraction. In Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout at Disney's California Adventure, a paper invoice from Excess Tech is located on the collector's desk. Although it's a pretty small and obscure Easter egg, it's nice to see Disney still remember the attraction that they probably want to forget ever came to be. Even though Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter has been closed for over 16 years, it's still one of the most talked about, fascinating, and controversial attractions ever in theme park history. Considered ahead of its time, the attraction was unlike anything else made by Disney, creating terror and fear instead of happiness and joy for any guest who experienced it. Even though it's been long gone, there's no doubt that the most terrifying ride at the Magic Kingdom will ever be forgotten, not because of how innovative the attraction was, but how scary, grim, ghastly, horrifying, and traumatizing an encounter with an alien ended up being. So that is the theme park history of Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you would like us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, remember, if something can't be done with excess, it shouldn't be done at- you know what? No, 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 I'm not saying it. I see through your lies. Your company is nothing but a bunch of greedy, sleazy, alien dirtbags. Man, I can't believe I sold out for this. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, what's going on here? All right, why'd all the lights go out? No, oh, no, 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 no. All right, I'm, I'm sorry for what I said, okay? Excess tech is the way to go. Number one. Look, I said I'm sorry. Please get it out of here. I'm begging you to send it back. Send it back before it eats me. No, 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 no. Okay, come on. I'm really sorry. It's okay. How much more do I have to say? Please, please. I'm begging you not to do this. Come on. I got, I got, I got a cat. I gotta take care of. Somebody help. Help. No. No. No.